hello ladies and gentlemen this video shows the summary of the basics of ecg assessment and its interpretation Cardiac muscle fibers are basically classified into contractile and non-contractile fibers. These non-contractile fibers are the ones that generate and conduct electrical impulses in the heart. Therefore, they are the ones responsible for self-excitation of the heart. The non-contractile fibers form the conducting system of the heart and this slide shows the components of the conducting system of the heart. Normally, the impulse originates from sinoatrial knot and then depolarizes the atrial muscles. Then it is transmitted to atrioventricular knot and then it passes to bundle of his, which, which then divides into right and left bundle branches. And then the impulse passes through uh, those branches to the Pokin J fibers and uh, the ventricular myocardium. This type of cells are able to generate their own impulse uh, because uh, they have an unstable resting membrane potential and this is due to their permeability to sodium even at rest. Uh, therefore there is continuous leakage of sodium and sometimes calcium into the cell raising the membrane potential to threshold and then an impulse when action potential is fired. This slide demonstrates how the impulse is generated and transmitted. The SA node has the highest rate of discharge of impulses and this is why impulses from the SA node depolarize AV node and the Purkin J cells before they discharge their own impulses and this is why the SA node is regarded as pacemaker of the heart. The bipolar leads in ECG major voltage difference uh, between two points. As indicated on the slide, uh, they form uh, an equilateral triangle with the heart at the center. 
and you can see where the positive and negative pole of each lead is on the triangle. This slide shows the augmented leads which are unipolar, meaning they measure voltage at a particular point. They are AVR, AVL and AVF as shown on the slide. This slide shows the placement of precordial leads or chest leads, which are unipolar in nature from V1 to V6. If you look at this slide, we can also classify uh, ECG leads uh, into anterior leads, inferior and lateral. The anterior taking the record from the anterior aspect of the heart, as you can see, uh, from V1 to V4. The inferior, uh, from the inferior aspect, that is lead 3, AVF and 2. Then the lateral, from the lateral aspect, including B5, V6, and lead 1. This is also showing the anterior, uh, inferior, and the lateral leads as indicated in the previous slide. These are ECG webs. The red box shows how they appear on the ECG paper. P-wave, atrial depolarization. Q-wave depolarization of interventricular septum from left to right.
R wave ventricular depolarization. S web representing later stage of ventricular depolarization. T wave ventricular repolarization. ECG intervals and their normal durations in seconds. The box on this slide shows a PR interval, uh, which is the time from the beginning of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization. And its normal uh, value is also shown on the slide. The standard calibration of the ECG paper, the voltage is at 10 mm per millivolt and the time is uh, 25 mm per second at the speed of the recording. So each small box which is 1 mm is 0 0.1 millivolt, that is for voltage and for time each small box is 0 0.04 seconds. This slide shows how to estimate the duration of cardiac cycle by counting the number of small boxes between two R waves and multiplying by 0 0.04 seconds. This slide shows how to calculate heart rate in beats per minute.
these are the six steps uh, that can be easily followed for rhythm interpretation first check if there is electrical activity then calculate the rate and then check if the rhythm is regular by uh, calcul calculating the distance between different RR intervals uh, that is the duration of cardiac cycles if they are almost equal then the rhythm is regular then uh, check the width of uh, QRS complex I uh, usually should be narrow within two to three small squares and then check presence of arterial activity if there is normal P wave always preceding a QRS complex and then how the arterial activity is related to the ventricular activity that is by, by checking the PR interval whether it is normal or not. Here there is presence of electrical activity. The rate is about 83 beats per minute which is normal and it is regular. Uh, you can see there are about 18 small boxes between the RR intervals. The QRS width is narrow and there is always normal P wave preceding each QRS complex and the PR interval is within a normal range about 0 0.16 seconds. So this is a sinus rhythm. This slide differs from the previous one in that the heart rate here is uh, 125 beats per minute. So this is sinus tachycardia. Here the RR interval is prolonged. As you can see there are about 36 uh, small boxes. Therefore the heart rate is about 41 beats per minute. This is sinus bradycardia.